Hi, my name is Wesley, otherwise known as HeyW, and I'm a freelance 3D artist and animator, and this is part one in my series on making an animated short from scratch. Before getting started, I wanted to show what we'd be creating, and this will cover everything from creating the character, the sets, the lighting environment, materials, and of course the animation itself. The goal in this first video will be to simply create the main character model, and I'll be showing how you can really use the tools and the software to their fullest to take as much of the workload off the artist as possible. Now I'm not much of a character sculptor, so the methods I use here are pretty simple and easy to follow, and I'm making a pretty simple character, but it wouldn't take much to add clothes, accessories, and make a pretty detailed character without much modeling experience at all. Here I'm creating this character kind of just off the top of my head. Of course, it never hurts to have sketches or some kind of reference to work off of. Regardless, the steps will be pretty much the same. I'm starting out with some basic objects to get the rough shape of the character. I use a pretty high poly sphere for the torso, but in general, you want to use as low poly shapes as possible as fewer points are much easier to work with. Again, the idea here is just to get the basic shape of the character. I don't care too much about topology. I'm just using whatever modeling operations, sculpting tools, whatever gets the job done. I also want to mention the window popping up in the center of the screen from time to time. That's a script called Cosmos. I'd highly recommend it as it's a huge time saver, but all the tools I'm accessing through it can be found in the modeling menus. Anyways, to create this foot, I started out with just a cube and then extruded out a piece for the toes and foot. I added this bevel here to give it a little more definition. And then the edge loops along the leg, I circularized so it's more of a tube shape, then widened out the top so it merges a little bit better with the body. For the arm, I instead start out with a low poly cylinder, but it's pretty much the same idea. Tapered wide towards the body, I add a few edge loops to um, allow me to shape this some, and then I bevel the end to round it out. I'm doing a mitten style hand, so the only finger I need to add is the thumb here. If I was doing a normal hand, I'd add the rest of the fingers in exactly the same way, creating this capsule shape and then just placing it roughly where the finger should be. And this is kind of a chubby character, so one capsule seems like enough. If I were doing thinner fingers, I'd use a separate capsule for each joint. I could even go as far to add spheres on the knuckles and each finger joint if I was trying to make like a bony hand. Again, you can just place objects and model them in any way it takes to get the shape you want. Once I'm done, I'll select the arm and leg, press Ctrl D to duplicate, and then Ctrl G to group, and then set the scale X to negative one. I spend a little more time just tweaking the positions and shapes of things, but once I'm happy, I'll select everything and go to Mesh, Boolean, and Union. It should look the same, but now it's one continuous mesh. And this allows me to go to Mesh, Retopologize, and get usable geometry. And in this case, it's pretty good. Uh, it's a little asymmetrical, but I'm able to fix this pretty easily. But I wanted to show this example. This is worst case scenario where the topology and the shape are completely asymmetrical. And I can still retopologize this. It's just less than ideal. So to fix it, the first thing you need to do is mirror it and disable merge borders. Now I can just double click one half and delete it, then retopologize this and mirror again. And this time I wanna leave merge borders on. And now it's perfectly symmetrical. Here I just spend a few minutes with the sculpting tools, just refining the shape some, especially focusing on where the body parts meet. I don't use this for my character, but I wanted to take a minute to show the concept of patches, which is very specific topology on the elbows and knees that give really natural deformations when bent. There's several different kinds of patches depending on the effect you're going for, but here I show one of the more common ones that's really great for elbows and knees. Some patches are simple, others are more intricate, so there's no standard procedure to follow to just make these. Usually it's a matter of just pulling up a reference image of the one you want and just trying to recreate the topology. In general though, I find it's easiest to start with the center of the patch, and then it's just a matter of figuring out how to stitch that in with the rest of the geometry. And I'm using the Quadral tool for this. If you're not familiar with it, I show how to use it a little bit later when working on the head. Unfortunately, this isn't skinned to a rig yet, but I can give a rough demonstration of the effect just by selecting the faces and rotating them. As you can see, you get this really nice deformation, a well-defined elbow, and all of this without blend shapes or any extra rigging tricks. This is just one of many kind of patches out there, each with different effects, so it's worth being aware of a few and knowing what you can do with them. But again, my character is kind of blobby and round, so I don't end up using this, but it's a great technique to be aware of. 
So far I've ignored the head. I end up keeping it as separate objects from the body, but even if I wanted to merge them together, I'd still want to be able to work on the head separately. Because where I can use auto retopology on the body, head geometry is a little more complicated and I'll need to retopologize that manually. But to start, the process is just like the body, doing whatever you need to to get the rough shape down and not worrying about topology. Again, this character is so simple, I don't add anything here, but I could have roughed out lips, nose, ears, just by forming them out of simple objects and then bulleting them together and then retopologizing. So once I'm done with the head shape, I'll make it a live surface and then I'll enter the quad draw tool. This allows me to place points on the surface and then connect them together with polygons. And this tool can do a lot, but there's a cheat sheet in the modeling toolkit that tells you all the keystrokes and what they do. So I like to keep that up on the side. Most of the time though, it's just clicking to place points and then shift clicking to connect them. I'm starting with this ring for the mouth as this is really important to getting good mouth deformations. And this is why I have to do it manually as auto retopology won't do this. And as I mentioned, this character doesn't have eye sockets, but if it did, I'd make rings just like the mouth and then try and connect them all together like in this example. The rest of the head's pretty easy. I just wanna make sure I'm left with nothing but quads. And when I'm finished, as I mentioned, I can use shift to relax the points and kind of just even them out. And now I can delete the base mesh and focus on finishing the mouth. I'll extrude this edge a few times to make these box shaped lips and then I use a mix of the sculpting tools and just soft select to make these look a little bit better. And lastly, I extrude this edge a few more times to make the inside of the mouth. I make an eye with this smoothed out cube, and then I experiment with different places to put it, as well as moving the mouth around. I also flatten out this part of the face so the eyes can rest there more naturally. It'll be at this time I merge the head with the body and create the neck, but as I mentioned, I keep them separate for this character. Once finished working on the model, it's time to map the UVs. I start with a planar projection along the Z, and then I go around the mesh creating seams. This can be done by selecting an edge and then pressing shift X. Although the shift X hotkey only applies when you're in the UV editor. So you'll see I'll select an edge and then I'll just click in the UV editor and shift X to create the seam. There's no objectively right or wrong way to do this. The idea is you just want to make a few strategic cuts that allow you to unfold this without too much distortion. Imagine trying to peel an orange and lay its skin flat without tearing it into 100 pieces. Once I'm finished making cuts, I can go to modify and unfold. I didn't realize this till afterwards, but I had the unfold algorithm set to legacy instead of unfold 3D. The latter gives much better results, so you probably won't run into as many issues as I do here, but at least it gives me a chance to show some workarounds. In the case of the hands here, you can see there's some overlap. It's pretty minor though, so I can fix it pretty easily with soft select. I could fix this shell in the same way, but instead I'll go to tools and unfold, and then I can interactively unfold it. I then move on to unwrapping the head, following the exact same procedure as the body. Once I'm done, I'll select the head and body, go to modify and layout. This will arrange all the shells without letting any of them overlap. Now onto his hat, I want to make it look like a folded leaf, so I start out by just cutting out this leaf texture and retopologizing. I do want to mention that retopologize at the moment doesn't preserve UVs. Now a simple plane like this, you could just reproject the texture back on, but say it's a more complicated object, the workaround for that is to create a duplicate, then retopologize, then select the original followed by the retopologized object, and go to mesh, transfer attributes. You can use this to transfer the UVs from the original to the retopologized mesh, as I show in this example. For the base of the hat, I make this cone shape out of a cube and then smooth it out. Then I extrude the edge a few times to create the rim. Then with soft select, I try and make it a little uneven. Then I planar project and unwrap the hat and map it to the same leaf texture. I now want to figure out some way to wrap this leaf around the hat so it looks like there's folds and layers to it. I start with the shrink wrap deformer. This works okay, but it has some issues, especially on the rim. I use this method to place a few leaves, but then I make a few more and I want to simulate these falling on the hat. I start by making the hat a passive collider and then the leaves and cloths. 
The default simulation settings are mostly fine. I just want to increase the stickiness some so they don't just slide off. But now they're getting kind of stuck on the top and middle part of the hat, and I really only want them colliding with the rim, so I'll just select those faces and delete them. And now I can just focus on how the leaves collide and contour to the rim. One more thing to note is depending on the size of your scene, you might be seeing really thick gaps between the cloth and the collider. If this is the case, just reduce the collision thickness. Once I'm happy with the sim results, I'll delete history on the leaves. I can also delete the nucleus and all of the simulation related objects. Then I'll touch up the leaves some, deleting the excess faces and folding in the parts that stick out. Now back to the leaves I shrink wrapped on, they're a little smooth in comparison to the simulated leaves. So I'll grab the edge loops, enable soft select with a pretty short radius, and then just move the edge loops around to create some wrinkles. You also might have noticed I only simulated leaves for the front of the hat, so I'll duplicate these, flip them 180, and then move them to cover the back as well. Finally, I'll select all the leaf pieces and parent them to the hat base, and with that the model is done and ready for rigging in part 2. But for now, this concludes part 1. Thank you for watching, and feel free to subscribe to the NVIDIA Studio YouTube channel for more videos like this.